pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to my words. You are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commanded to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne. He foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ. And neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we're all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and put him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord who comes 
rejoices, my body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld. <coughs> you nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo Reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially, according to each one's words, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with the perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Him. 
but we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astonished us as they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, they had the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them, and it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way, and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been seen, and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on their way, and, now, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Their eyes were prevented from recognizing him, and then they pressed him to stay with them. Today's Gospel uh, from St. Luke's, um, this is a very um, uh, descriptive um, resurrection appears, probably the most detailed and elaborate of all the synoptic gospels post-resurrection appearances. And um, it features Jesus as a stranger and who approaches them, someone that they're not able to see. Um, it, it tells us that they're downcast and um, that they feel dejected and that they give it up. And um, and you know, here's these two disciples who left everything to follow Jesus, but the events of Good Friday had dashed their hopes, and um, they didn't feel they could go on you know, without Jesus there with them. So they were probably returning to their old way, to their old ways, to their old lives. But then. You know, Jesus appears to them. Again, we hear that they were prevented from recognizing him. And why was this? You know, first, um, it's the gospel's way of showing that the risen Jesus is not the exact same phenomenon that the Jesus of Nazareth was, who they had journeyed with and witnessed him uh, preach and minister and to cure and, and to raise the dead. And second, I think it's because Jesus never forces himself on us. He meets us where we are at and invites us to enter into a relationship, enter into a conversation with him. He, he wants to make a connection with us. He wants to feed us um, so that um, we can think about it, so we can, you know, digest it and, and um, and help it to, to make sense and, and to reveal the, the truth to us. And so, um, you know, again, the disciples um, seemed, um, you know, that they, uh, the disciples, you know, you know were down, again, they were downcast and they were, you know, they were, I mean, Jesus met them where they were at and then they couldn't believe 
you know, this stranger's ignorance, you know, you know, what, what happened, you know, why were you downcast? But again, Jesus, you know, responds by explaining and unfolding the scriptures to them along the way, and um, especially the parts that refer to him as the Messiah, and the divine necessity of all that had happened. But still, they were intrigued, but still they were not able to make a connection between this stranger and the risen Lord. And so when, it got to, when they got to the village, you know, it, tell, you know, it tells us that it appeared that the stranger, i.e. Jesus, was going to continue on his way. But again, he, the stranger had, had met them where they were at, had an encounter with them, made an impression upon them, and they were, they were intrigued, and um, their, their need to know more was, um, was truly present. And so um, they invited him, you know, stay with us. You know, we want to continue this conversation. And so they invite Jesus in, and he comes, and, and he stays with them. You know, this invitation on their part, after Jesus had met them and entered into a relationship with, was hospitality. They were, we, they were um, inviting him um, to come and share further with them. And, you know, again, all of us, when we have conversations, especially through prayer with Jesus Christ, he is inviting us into a relationship with him, and then we, in turn, are intrigued and want to know more and we, we become hungry and so we we act out of hospitality to invite you to stay with us and then suddenly their eyes were open to see the Lord Jesus the risen Lord because of, of the breaking of the bread and you know this whole gospel of Luke and this journey of these two disciples who are to Emmaus um, was, was a catechetical tool in the early church. It was often used to de describe the Mass, the, which was known then as the breaking of the bread. And, um, and breaking the bread was Jesus himself. And then, and then it tells us that Jesus you know, disappears suddenly because, okay, he's fed them, he's given them everything they need. Now they you know, need to go out of the world. They need to evangelize it. And they are, they are, you know, they're aware that suddenly their hearts, which were once heavy with sadness, were now burning because of, of that experience they had with Jesus. So much so that they, you know, it was evening, it was dark. They were so moved that they needed to return to Jerusalem. They retraced their steps, so to speak, and returned to Jerusalem to that upper room to share their experience um, with the risen Lord. They were evangelizing, which we are all called to do in and through our lives. And so with this gospel, there's so many, there's so much going on and it's so beautiful and you can go so many different ways and preach on so many, you know, it's a great gospel because there's so many things that the, the, the priest or deacon can preach about this. But I think the thing that I would like to get across today is, is that we need to always be open to recognizing Christ in our life journey. Not only in how he uh, comes to us and uh, breaks into our lives and enters into conversation and wants to enter into relationship with us, but also, we need to see Christ in others. But to see Christ in others, we need to be Christ to them. And, um, and that is our, the people that we know and, and love and, and like the best, our family and friends that we're close to, but also to the people that we work with, our neighbors, and even complete strangers, especially those least among us as we travel along um, in this life. And that we need to, you know, um, be present to other people. We need to meet them where they're at. But all too often we want to make a judgment about that person. You know, maybe we don't like the way they look or what they're wearing or what they're doing or the sign that they're holding up to say that they're homeless and they want to work for food or, or whatever, or um, somebody cuts us off on the road, you know, and all of a sudden road rage flares up. Well, that's not being Christ. 
And uh, but again, we always need to be conscious of, you know, that through the waters of baptism, we have become another Christ and we are to act accordingly and out of humility and charity uh, in our lives. And, and again, when our lives are so busy, it's not always easy to recognize Christ. And, and again, I want to go back to these two disciples who were dejected um, after Good Friday. And, and you know, that they thought everything that they had worked for and hoped for was gone and lost. And, and, and they were returning to their old ways of life. You know, as we begin to, um, you know, after the stay at home order and we begin to, to re enter back into society and to our lives. Let's not see it so much as going back to our old ways, but may this time of this stay at home order, this, this time that, that has been, that we've experienced suffering, that we've been, we've been separated from, you know, not only from um, family and friends and from our coworkers and jobs and the ministries and the different things that we've been involved with, um, that we've had the opportunity in that suffering to grow in our appreciation of everything that God has blessed us with, most especially the gift of the Eucharist, which is Christ himself present to us. And, and again, in the suffering, you know, again, God never causes suffering, but he allows it to happen so that we can grow in our faith, so we can grow in our relationship with him, so we can in, in deep in our relationship with him, we can better understand how we need to be Christ to one another and how that is a necessity for us as we journey along uh, the road of life day by day. And so as we re-enter back into our lives, whatever that may be, may it be an, an opportunity, may we see it as an opportunity to be Christ and to recognize Christ's presence in all those around us. And may we take an interest in them, meet them where they're at, enter into conversation, find a way to introduce Christ to them, to evangelize, and to share the good news with them, and to share, you know, um, you know, talking with a, a number of people on, on Zooms and emails and over the phone and stuff like that, or just talking about the little ways that the things that their families, again, the domestic church are, are you know, watching Mass on TV or, you know, searching out you know, um, resources on how to, you know, to, to share their faith and, and to witness their faith at home and to one another. And, and again, it is a challenging time but in reading the scriptures and sharing the scriptures and, you know, the Bible and, um, you know, reading the Bible and stuff like that and just, uh, you know, praying the rosary over uh, over the telephone or over a Zoom conversation with their families and, and stuff like that, reconnecting and such. And so, again, let's not see just so much going back to our old ways of life, but we have been renewed through this suffering and through this experience, and it should make us hungry to be Christ and to see Christ in one another. And again, that is so essential in our journey um, in this lifetime to eternal life with God in heaven. And so may all of our discussions always be about um, an encounter with Christ and being Christ with one another because we, can, we are sure of his presence with us. Um, again, most especially uh, through the Eucharist. But once we are fed with the Eucharist, we are to go out into the world and to, to live that experience and share that experience by being Christ to one another. And we can only do that when we know that, um, that Christ is within us. And then once we are, are sure of that, we can then share that with one another. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life in the risen Lord and to walk with him always. Excuse me. God the Father sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. We beg you now for the fullness of life as we pray. That all members of the church be renewed in our desire to draw closer to the risen Lord and to walk with him always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The people of every nation use natural resources more wisely and treat creation more respectfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders and lawmakers, that the light and wisdom of Christ would illumine their decisions and strengthen them to pursue truth and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are entrusted with the care of the sick and the elderly remain faithful in their ministry and find strength in this time of uncertainty from our risen Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose faith has been shaken or has been overtaken by doubt in this time of pandemic, let the promise of the risen Lord lift them from their despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will honor Christ as Lord in their hearts and homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died, especially Mark Morrissey and Billy Drell, for whom this Mass has been offered, and Al Herman, father of Zelma Michaels. May they rejoice in the presence of our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions of Linus and Anita Haverkamp, parents of Connie Marson, for whom this Mass has also been offered in celebration of their 60th wedding anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the grace this week to remain conscious of Christ's abiding presence among us, that he may sanctify all that we say and do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, reveal to us your saving power and preserve us always in your grace, for we trust in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all time to all claim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalted in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. So that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make all of these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you are summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in his, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <laughs> Oh, 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The prayer to the Most Holy Redeemer. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, embolden me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Never permit me to be parted from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you that with your saints I may praise you for age upon age. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, 
kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.